Hey, what's going on YouTube? How y'all been? It's been a while since I posted a video, probably about three weeks or so, two or three weeks. Uh, the last video I posted, I believe it was uh, my uh, Glock 43X comparison with the uh, 365. So, had did some modifications to it, got some uh, stippling done. Uh, you might not be able to tell, but it was it's Cerakoted slightly darker than the original, and I added a uh, uh, agency trigger. So I was having issues with this agency trigger, so I uh, uh, ended up figuring it out that it was the connector. So I replaced the connector, took it out to the range yesterday, and it shoots uh, f amazingly, flawlessly. So I'm gonna do a video on this here shortly, but uh, the reason why for today's video was after the range, I decided to go to a gun store. Uh, went to the gun store and at the time they were getting ready to close so i had to go in and out so i had about five minutes or so but uh something caught my eye it was like an aura surrounding it i was like oh my god this thing is freaking amazing so what i ended up doing was i took a look at it real quick and today i ended up picking it up so it is a beretta 92 golf elite ltt so this thing is freaking amazing. So my last deployment in Afghanistan, I carried a, um, a M9 and I said I was gonna start doing a, a M9 collection or Brenda 92 collection. So this is actually the first gun in that collection. So um, this thing is amazing. So we're gonna go over to the table and do a quick, just take a look at it real quick. I haven't fired it yet. Um, probably end up going in the range next couple of days and I'll shoot a video for that, but yeah. This thing is pretty amazing. If you're familiar with uh, military firearms, you know that the Beretta 92 M9 was a sidearm of choice for the military and law enforcement since the 1980s. All right. So as we all know, the MHS trials, uh, Beretta didn't win uh, to keep the contract uh, with their M9A3 or their APX, but it did force manufacturers to come up with some innovations that were passed on to the customers. All right. So. We're going to do a quick unboxing. Um, what you get is this black Beretta box with Beretta, Beretta markings. Uh, opening it up, going to see that we have uh, the firearm, uh, three Metgar magazines, one inserted, two right here, the locking mechanism, and there are some whole bunch of literature to read which it does come with this pretty cool uh m9 a3 operator's manual so pulling this firearm out taking a closer look all right although the firearm was safety checked before filming first things first all right it's checked to make sure that it's safe so no ammunition nothing in the chamber nothing in the magazine all right so looking at this thing it is pretty doggone amazing i actually don't think that the cameras do this thing any justice um, it is actually a beautiful beautiful firearm all right so the Breda 92 golf elite ltt or Lang langdon tactical technologies is a single double action hammer fired a uh, nine mil semi-automatic pistol the barrel length is 4.7 inches with an overall height of 5.4 inches, an overall length of 8.5 inches with an overall unloaded weight of 33.3 ounces. The finish is a black Cerakote with all metal parts other than the uh, barrel having an MP3 coating. It's MSRP for around 1100 bucks, uh, but you probably find it between nine and a thousand. This one in particular was a little over a grand. Um, so in comparison with Wilson Combat uh, 92 Golf uh, Vertex Interior and Tactical, they run about 14, uh, $1,495, 1500 So uh, what you get for options on this um, gun is probably on par with that of a uh, Wilson Combat which they are nice firearms too, but um, for the money, this is a, a better choice. All right, the Elite LTT is a combination between uh, Beretta and Ernest Langdon. All right, if you don't know who Ernest Langdon is, uh, Google him and find out how much of a badass this guy is. All right, so 
Breda took feedback and listened to some of their customers and built a custom gun, pretty much a custom gun for the public with features that improve on their 90 series pistols uh, to come up with what they call the ultimate 92 package. I fired a whole bunch of M9s before and carried one on my last uh, deployment in Afghanistan. And from what I'm seeing, the Elite LTT is far, far superior from a uh, regular M9. But so the crazy thing is, this is the first time that I've actually gotten uh, M9 that didn't have any imperfections like messed up bluing or chips and all this other stuff. So, um, you know, military, you know, a lot of people handle these these weapons and they get beat up pretty bad. They still fire. They're still good for for deployments and carrying uh, down range. But, you know, they 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 do take a beating. And I'm pretty sure for police forces that 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 had them or still have them, you know, their M9s are 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 pretty beat up. So. Uh, in addition to the uh, aforementioned uh, stats that I just uh, talked about, the Elite LTT features include a Vertec uh, M9A3 slide with front cocking serrations, um, a dovetail fiber optic front sight with a square notch rear sight, and a stainless 4.7 inch barrel with which has a target crown on there. It also has one of my favorite things is um, a solid steel guide rod and a beveled rear slide. So the slide is somewhat beveled right there. So when it's coming back, it's not tearing up your hands. Um, so like the G models uh, of the 92 series, uh, this just has a decocker only mechanism on the side instead of a traditional uh, decocker and safety. The frame is built on the M9A1 frame with checkering on the front and the back strap. It has a beveled magwell with no lanyard loop. And it also has the an exclusive, what they call an exclusive radius trigger guard. So the trigger guard is rounded just a little bit uh, to keep you from getting uh, calluses or getting beat up after you've been shooting this thing all day or taking it to the range for a while. Nice features of this is the VZ uh, G10 grips that it has on there. So they're a lot slimmer than the grips that come with a a uh, Beretta 92 and it feels a lot better in the hand because it has some some traction to it and this this front checkering and this rear checkering gives it a, a great feel and it also makes it a little bit easier to hit that MAGA release which is also an oversized uh, somewhat extended MAGA release button um, this model also has a D hammer spring and as you can notice that it has that lightweight skeletonized hammer and i really 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 like this gun so uh i think i'm gonna end up grabbing some some uh eighth some a3 magazines for this uh they do fit tried it in the store um this does come with these metgar 15 round magazines and but you know uh the more the better the better all right so the takedown on this is classic uh, Breda 92. So you have your little button that you hit here. So let's make sure this thing is still empty. All right, no brass, no ammo drill sergeant. Push, you push a button here, you pull down on your takedown lever and you just slide forward. So you have your uh, non-captured uh, stainless steel guide rod, um, your traditional Beretta barrel and this one is in stainless it's a pretty nice barrel so I'm gonna see how, how it holds up for shooting and your slide the internal zone here are standard standard Beretta um, also the internal parts like I said before are mp3 coated so this should provide some cool very nice smoothness when firing this gun all right so let me go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll we'll check the trigger out. All right, so got this thing back together. Um, and I'm just telling you, you have to see this thing in person because it is for 
a non stainless gun to be all black Cerakoted. Um, it's pretty nice. And these, these stainless steel touches on there, you know, this, this is a man, this thing is nice. This is in 1080 and I'm telling you, it's not doing it any justice from what I'm, I'm looking at right now. So let's take a look at the trigger pull on this thing. All right. This gun has a Langdon tactical trigger job and it's pretty smooth. So double action is here you go. Bam. Pretty smooth. Single action. Pretty light. Reset. Hmm. Pretty nice reset. So Ernest Langdon is not a big fan of, of resetting for a trigger, but they actually did a pretty good job on this reset of the trigger on this gun. So let's do a quick uh, trigger pull weight. And then we'll move back up top to close out this video. All right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the the double action uh, trigger pull. I'm pretty sure it's going to be up there, but we're going to take a look at it. So according to this, the double action trigger pull is eight pounds, 9.1 ounces. Let's do one more. This one was eight pounds, 1.8 ounces. Let's try single action. Single action trigger pull is Hmm. Four pounds, 2.5 ounces. Let's do two more. Second trigger pull is pretty sure that's not right, but it says three pounds, one point correction, three pounds, 13.8 ounces. And one more. Huh. Three pounds, 12.2 ounces. Very light trigger, very light trigger. So yeah, I can't wait to get, I can't wait to get this thing to the range. So let's go back up top and uh, close out this video. So after taking a look at this on the tabletop, you know, I, I think that this is a damn good firearm. Uh, so I think also that it is a bang for the buck for what you're getting at the $1,100 price point it beats firearms like the Wilson combat for Tex interior which comes in around $1,500 or to me also any other Beretta 90 series uh, M9s but it can be had for under a thousand dollars so like I said before this is a beautiful firearm and I can't wait to actually get it to the range to try it out especially these bright ass fiber optic sights so these things light up in in the light so if you're interested in getting the uh, Beretta 92 Golf uh, Elite LTT go out to your local gun store and pick one up so on another note uh, I guess I'm gonna go on a little rant so over the past couple of years, we've heard that social media is trying to silence the gun community and certain political parties. Um, after hearing it, you know, you think that that mentality is somewhat biased and maybe untrue, but it happened to me today. So today I posted a picture on uh, Instagram um, with this gun in my hand, holding it in my truck. So... I was offered a $30 credit to promote the post. So this is on my channel, I mean on my page for this channel. And I decided to promote the Instagram page and this YouTube channel with that $30. Uh, which isn't much, but you know, it, it gets us out there. Uh, however, uh, IG decided to disapprove the uh, promotion stating that it violated their user agreement by selling firearms and ammunition. So here's a pic of the screenshot. 
So I protested it, and it's kind of still up in the air right now. I'll figure out whether or not they're going to prove it or not. But you wouldn't believe that certain groups are being silenced until it happens to you, right? Um, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but now I believe that it's happening on social, men on social uh, media that they're trying to infringe upon certain groups' rights, especially the gun community, and they're trying to suppress you know, what we believe in and what we're doing. Um, so in order to take away our Second Amendment rights, you have to first start by taking away our First Amendment rights. So if you take away the First Amendment's rights and silence us, you can silence the gun community. Um, I know guns are somewhat a touchy subject these days, and I understand what's going on and happening out there in the world with mass shootings and gun violence, but we have the right to defend ourselves and own firearms, you know, as Americans. So... Go out there and support organizations that fight for for our Second Amendment rights. Well, you know, I'm not an advocate of the NRA. I don't believe in how they operate and how some communities have been excluded from the gun rights conversation and how those same, same communities are pro portrayed by the NRA. But they are one of the few organizations out there that's trying to ex uh, express the gun community's views. So if the NRA is not for you, if you're not into it, like how it's not for me, Go find and support another group that lobbies for our rights and come election year or election time, uh, vote accordingly. Uh, so I'm off my rant now. I'm, I'm good. So thank you all for the support uh, that you've been giving me. And I appreciate it. all the supporters. I appreciate all the views. I appreciate all the comments. Uh, so if you like our videos, please leave a comment and like and subscribe below. Have a great night.